hard, rocky, thorny and good, are not the members of a heavy metal band. They are the parable of the sower's four categories of response to Jesus. These categories are pivotal to Mark's gospel in that they provide the means for understanding many of the different characters and stories in that gospel. The first category is the hard ground. Here the truth in Jesus doesn't take root at all. Mark portrays the scribes, Pharisees, and Jerusalem religious leaders as never really hearing Jesus' message, but instead calling him a blasphemer from the first time they hear him until their last. Ominously, in the explanation of this parable, the character Satan is first associated with the Jewish opposition. He has developed from something of a prosecuting attorney in the book of Job to a now more sinister spirit. Later, he will become a demigod. In time, Satan's supposed infiltration of Judaism will be an excuse for the Christian crimes of vilifying, persecuting, and murdering Jews. The second category is the rocky ground. Here, the truth in Jesus sprouted, but had very shallow roots. When persecution came, they withered. In Mark's gospel, the 12 male disciples are portrayed as the rocky ground. Peter, James, and John, the paramount leaders, initially reacted positively to Jesus' call. But when the soldiers come to arrest Jesus, they all fled. Peter eventually denied him three times. These men embraced the truth with enthusiasm, but when the heat came on, they folded. One of the debates about the authorship of Mark's gospel is why if Mark was allegedly a follower of Peter in Rome, as has traditionally been maintained, why then does the gospel betray Peter so negatively? The third category is the thorny ground. Here the truth in Jesus is choked out by the love of affluence and influence. Think of Herod, who hears John the Baptist gladly, but has him beheaded rather than violate an oath made before guests. Think of Mark's Pilate, who knew Jesus was innocent, but ordered him crucified because he wanted to please the crowds. Think of the rich man who obeyed all the commandments, but could not bring himself to sell his possessions. They all glimpse the truth, but in the end refuse to act on it because of their concerns about reputation, authority, and wealth. Truth is choked off and dies. The last category is the good soil. Here the truth of Jesus flourishes. Within Mark's gospel, there are many, mostly anonymously, who come to Jesus in faith, are healed or saved by it, and then tell others. It's in this last category that most of the women in the gospel belong. The social roles of women in first century Greco-Roman society were very curtailed. Male honor in public depended on winning contests of wit, strength, or rhetoric. What's new, you might say. And in private, on asserting authority over women of their class and men and women of lower classes. For women, however, winning public honor was virtually impossible and any public display strongly discouraged. 
Women could, however, avoid shame by submitting to the authority of male superiors. In stark contrast to these norms, Mark depicts unaccompanied women coming and speaking to Jesus in private, like the Syrophoenician woman who bested him in an argument, and the woman who poured perfume over his head. Even more shockingly, Mark depicts unaccompanied women approaching Jesus in public, like the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. Mark's Jesus ignores the social rules and welcomes these unexpected ones, these nuisances and nobodies in society. Well, the parable of the sower invites us to think today about our society and church and where we might fall in these agrarian categories of hard, rocky, thorny, and good. There's a biblical phrase, a hard heart. It refers to a person or an institution that has closed itself off from any truth save its own. Some, like fundamentalist sects, use scripture as a weapon to defend that truth. The challenge to them is to soften their hearts and make themselves vulnerable to the grace and generosity of God. Yet hard hearts are not the sole preserve of some fundamentalists. We too, extending the metaphor, are susceptible to the fatty foods of stereotypes and quick fried answers. Welcoming the presence and possibilities of the foreign, the difficult and the different is a spiritual discipline we all need. The rocky ground is a challenge to us churchgoers, the inheritors of the mantle of discipleship. We go to church, sing hymns, help and care. But when we have to stand up or stand out for what we believe, we can wither. The challenge is to be rooted in prayer and use it to sustain our courage. By prayer, I do not mean simply addressing an invisible deity. Rather, I mean opening ourselves to all that is holy, including the lives and suffering of others and our own life and suffering. As the prayer book says, we immerse ourselves in the great compassion and let that compassion flow through us. The strength to stand comes not through developing the muscles or the mind, but by being steeped in compassion. The thorny ground, where the desire for influence and affluence chokes off truth, is a salient reminder of the shortcomings of our success oriented culture. This culture so prevalent is in essence a heresy. It holds up the rich and powerful as models, whereas Mark's gospel holds up the blind, bleeding, outspoken, and ostracized. Yet rather than pick out rich and powerful characters to vilify, as some in the media do, we need to face ourselves. The challenge is to let go of our dreams of money and control. For the pull to have more is a very potent current. Instead, we need to stand firm in the truth we find in Jesus, the truth of gift, grace, and compassion. Lastly, there is the good soil. We all like to imagine ourselves in this category. Yet Mark instead tells us to prepare for the unexpected the ones outside religion's official gates that might occasionally amble in late and ill-attired. His good soil is those on the margins. 